Hey New Hope, I hope you are all doing well and enjoying the beginning of September. I for one am very excited that fall is right around the corner and that it will be here very shortly and it will be wonderful. This season of life has looked very, very different for many of us and that is due to everything that is going on in our current events. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about a man in the Bible whose life was completely turned upside down. In fact, there is an entire book written about this man. Because this man's whole life is so good and plentiful and growing and God has blessed him so great, greatly and all of a sudden it's just taken from him. And in this book, the Bible explores how this man wrestle, wrestles with what is going on, but ultimately comes to understand how even though that he has lived an upright life, there are still troubles in this world that follow us. And he comes to know the sovereignty of God and his faithfulness. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about a man named Job. Now, we could talk about the entire book of Job, but today I want to focus on the very first chapter. Because right off the bat, we see Job do something that if we were in his shoes, we probably wouldn't respond the way he did. So in the very first chapter, we see that Job is a, is a blameless man who is upright, who feared the Lord and turned away from evil. We see that he has seven sons and three daughters. He has uh, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 oxen, and 500 female donkeys. And he has lots and lots of servants. And so that kind of positions him as one of the greatest, um, greatest of all the people of the East. So Job, being a very wealthy man, uh, we see that he is still a godly man who fears the Lord. The chapter goes on to tell us that he would offer burnt offerings to God and pray to him and ask for forgiveness if any of his children had done anything wrong and sinned. So he's very much uh, a spiritual leader in his home and for his family. The chapter continues and we see that Satan goes before God and God and Satan have this conversation about Job being a blameless, upright man who fears God, who shuns evil. And starting in verse 9, we see that Satan answers the Lord and says, Does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put a hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your hand. Only against him do not stretch out your hand. So, we see that God gives Satan permission to come against Job, against what he has, but he has to spare Job's life. So Satan goes out and start attacking, starts attacking what Job has. We see, uh, as the chapter goes on, that um, all of his oxen and donkey are seized by an enemy, and all of those servants that were with that livestock are killed. We then see that a fire comes and consumes and burns all the sheep and the servants that were with them. We see that another enemy comes and raids the camels, taking them and also killing the servants that were with those, those animals. And then we see that Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking in their eldest brother's house when a great wind comes and strikes the four corners of the house and it falls, killing all of Job's, Job's children. So just in that first chapter of the book, we see him lose all of his animal livestock. He loses almost every single one of his servants, except, except for the four that come and tell him of everything that's happening. And we see him lose all of his sons and daughters, the majority of his family. But what I really want us to pay attention to is how Job responds to this news of him losing almost everything all at once. In verse 40, or sorry, verse 20, it says that Job arose and tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell on the ground and worshipped. He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Now, personally, I don't know of anybody who has suffered such a great loss like Job did, 
But when I read this chapter and I think if that was me, I'd probably be, be scratching my head being like, why? Why, God? Why are you doing this? Why has this happened? I don't understand why. My response would not be to fall on the ground and worship or bless the name of the Lord. But that's exactly what Job, Job did. We all go through season and seasons in life where things are difficult, where we have loss, where we have suffering. And the, and the Bible literally tells us that we're going to have suffering in this, in this world. But I think we can learn something from Job in our response as we go through suffering and hardships. Instead of blaming God, cursing him or sinning, Job had a response of worship, of blessing the Lord's name. He did not sin or charge God with wrong. And we know at the end of the book, after he's wrestled with all that's happened to him, he comes to the conclusion of God's absolute sovereignty and faithfulness in his life regardless of what is going on. And in this first chapter, when we see the initial loss, we see that God, that Job's response is that God is sovereign and in control. And then as the book continues, we see that he has to wrestle with this, with this sadness, with this grief, with this depression, this journey of getting through that. And at the very end of the book, he still comes to that same conclusion. God is sovereign and good. And I know that many of us have, like I said, gone through some difficult seasons or are going through or will go through. But I want to encourage you that as you respond to all the craziness in life, the hurt, the heartache of the world, that God is still sovereign and, and good and he has a plan and purpose for your life. God, in the end of the book, it says that God blessed Job, restored his life, double that what it was. And though I, our lives probably won't look like Job's, and I pray that they never will. I hope you never go through a, such a loss and a hardship as Job went through. But we know that when hardships come our way, we can respond with worship, with blessing the Lord's name, and resting, knowing that God is sovereign over all, and that he holds us in his hands. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And this life might be a crazy wild ride, but the Lord remains the same and with us always. And let our response be to praise the Lord and bless his name, for he is good. Let me pray for you. God, I just want to thank you for every single person that attends New Hope, for every single person that is here watching this video. Lord, Keep our hearts and minds focused on you, Lord. Let our response, no matter what we go through in, lo in life, be to worship and bless your name. For you are good and you are in control. And we know that you hold us in your hand. And that you are Lord over all. We love you and we give you all the praise. And, 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 and you are worthy. In your name I pray. Amen. Bye, New Hope. Hope you have a great day.